Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and as we all know, Z390 launched not too long ago and with that came a lot of new motherboards. Motherboards from brands that we know and motherboards from brands that maybe we don't know, such as Super O. This is actually a derivative of Super Micro and today we've got the C9 Z390 PGW full-sized ATX motherboard and it seems like it's actually packing quite a few features. Let's take a look. So let's start off by looking at what's in the box. Along with the board, the box contains four SATA cables, the rear I.O. plate, two Wi-Fi antennas that screw directly into the board, identification stickers for your cables, a case badge sticker and a quick reference guide. So let's now start out by looking at the actual design of the board. As we can tell, it is a full-size ATX motherboard and has quite an industrial look to it. Everything is kind of matte black and has, you know, some metal kind of industrious looking heat sinks on there. So there are two points of branding. We have the Super O branding up on the rear IO and also the Play Harder slogan on the PCH heatsink. You'll also notice that around the PCH heatsink, we do have these M.2 heatsinks, which kind of actually merge into it. So it looks like it's one big plate. I actually really like this design and think that it kind of adds to the industrious look that I guess is kind of common with knowing who Super Micro are and then bringing that kind of industrial look down to the consumer level. Obviously with RGB being the buzzword of 2018, this doesn't come without it. It actually has quite a few different RGB areas. So we have an RGB area on the Super O logo on the rear IO. We have the Play Harder logo, which actually shines up as well. And also a small bit of uh, RGB on the audio area. It does also have two RGB headers, but sadly these are not addressable. Now, if you are looking to control that RGB, you can do it all through the Super O Booster software, which as well as controlling the lighting effects, you can also overclock and look at voltages and other features of your system. So taking a look at the CPU socket, obviously it is a socket 1151, so it does support uh, Intel 8th gen and also the latest 9th gen processors. In terms of power delivery, it has a 10 phase enterprise grade VRM system. So that's actually something that we've seen on their enterprise level products from Supermicro, and it's been brought down to that consumer level. This does mean that it supports a maximum TDP for CPUs of up to 140 watts and means that we're going to get plenty of clean, stable power to the CPU, especially if we're looking at overclocking, which is something we're going to do a little bit later on. To get that power delivered to the CPU, we have a single 8-pin connector. In terms of the heat sinks on this board, they are actually quite chunky and that's something that I like. I think it's going to be a bit of a Marmite thing. You're either going to love it or hate it. Around the CPU socket, there's actually three heat sinks, one at the top, one just underneath the rear IO and also one at the bottom of the CPU socket. There's also obviously the M.2 heat sinks, which kind of converge into the PCH heat sink with the Play Harder logo on there. And you will also notice there is a very small heat sink just covering over some of the audio area. It's actually really nice to see this amount of heat dissipation on the board. So we're expecting good things, especially when it comes to them glorious overclocks. In terms of memory support, we have four slots supporting DDR4, 4133 and higher. Now, this will support capacities up to 64 gigabytes, which should be more than enough for anyone running a modest Z390 based system. You will also notice that it does have the patented Super O shielded armor on there, which according to Super Micro or Super O, improves the connectivity between the board and also stops interference. So now that we've got that out of the way, it's time to look at obviously fan headers and USB headers. So let's see what it's got. There's a total of three system fan headers, two CPU fan headers, and one water pump connector above the CPU socket. Down at the bottom of the board, we find a COM port header, a TPM header, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 header, a USB 2.0 header, and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C connector, which was newly integrated into the Z390 chipset. For RGB, as I mentioned earlier, we have two headers. Neither of them are addressable though, which is a bit frustrating in today's market. In the top right of the board, we have a power and reset button and a clear CMOS button. We also have diagnostic debug LEDs down the bottom, which is always nice to see. Now, I'm actually really pleased to see these. The fact that you can do some overclocking on the fly and some troubleshooting is a really nice feature to see. And especially from a brand like Super O who aren't as prevalent in the market as say Asus or Gigabyte. So well done to Super O for doing that. It's nice to see on a board of this caliber. 
For all of your storage needs, SuperO has you pretty much covered. There's a total of six SATA 3 ports, which support RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. And probably not so common on a Z390 board, we have two U.2 ports, which also support RAID 0 and RAID 1. So what about them M.2 slots that we spoke about? Obviously they are covered by these chunky heat sinks, but underneath there are two in total, both supporting type 2260 and 2280 base modules. The bottom one additionally supports type 22110 modules. RAID 0 and RAID 1 is supported through M.2 on this board, and the board is also Intel Optane ready, which is nice to see, though expected. In terms of expansion slots, there are four shielded PCIe X16 slots, of which the second and the fourth can both run at the full X16 speeds. If utilizing all four lanes together, they run at X8 speeds with thanks to the Broadcom PEX8747 PCI switch. This is neat as it allows you to utilize four-way multi-GPU configurations. Crossfire X is also supported as is SLI and NVLink. Additionally, the board also features a single PCIe 3.0 X1 slot. So as we've seen so far, this board does pack a lot of features, but what about the rear IO? Let's take a look at that. From left to right, there is a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and two DisplayPort 1.2 ports. There's also one gigabit LAN port thanks to the Intel i219V controller, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A connector, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C connector, a 10 GBE LAN port utilizing the Aquantia AQC107 controller. We also find that we have another two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A ports, Wi Fi antennas that give 802.11 AC dual band Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. There is a single HDMI 2.0 port and five audio jacks with an optical SP diff port. These all run through the Realtek ALC1220 HD 7.1 audio codec. Between the two display ports and the HDMI port, that means that you're able to run without a GPU, a three-way multi-monitor configuration, all operating at 4K resolution, which I'm pretty sure you're gonna agree with me on this one. That's pretty neat. So now that we have all the features and the specs out of the way, we obviously want to talk about performance. But before we just jump straight into the stock performance, it's worth talking about the overclocks. But I want to put a little disclaimer on this. Pretty much all of the Z390 boards that we've tested all kind of perform the same. We all managed on all of them to hit 5 gigahertz at about 1.359 volts. Yes, that did mean a little bit of extra heat was generated, but that's more of the fault of the i9-9900K than the board itself. So now that we've obviously got the overclocking out of the way, it's time to look at the performance at both stock and that glorious overclock. So looking at the performance, you can see that pretty much this board ended up kind of middle of the road. But as you can see, even the boards that perform better and worse were all kind of within margin of error. As I said, Z390 as a whole doesn't really come down to the motherboard offering extra performance. All the motherboard really does is give you extra features such as you know, X16 speeds or different connectivity, which is exactly what we get on this board. It just goes to show though that SuperO are more than capable of keeping up with some of the bigger brands that have been out for a lot longer. So now it comes down to pricing. So in the UK, this is currently priced at about £307, and that's only through Newegg. Uh, I guess SuperO aren't really prevalent in the retail sector in the UK, so we only actually managed to find it at that one retailer. Sticking with Newegg in America, this is priced at $395 plus taxes and shipping. 
Now, yes, that might seem expensive, but you've got to remember what we actually have to offer here. We've got two U.2 slots. We've got two M.2 slots. We've got 10 GBE. We've got a PLX chip, which gives us extra bandwidth across the expansion lanes. And you are getting that pretty industrious, stable looking design with enterprise grade VRMs, which yes, it didn't really give us any benefit when overclocking compared to the other Z390 boards that we've looked at, but that's not to say that it's not giving us stable, clean power and means that the board is gonna last a lot longer. Like I said earlier, it just goes to show that Super O are actually able to keep up with some of the bigger boys on the market, like Asus and Gigabyte and MSI, ASRock. And I'm actually really pleased with the general design of this. And it seems like maybe Super O are learning bit by bit for every launch, they're coming out with something maybe a little bit better in terms of style, design, features, and performance. And I'm pretty sure this is probably one of the most feature packed boards on the market today from a brand that maybe not many people have heard of. So with that in mind, I'm actually more than inclined to sort of recommend that this is actually a very, very good board. Yes, it is a little bit on the expensive side, but like I said, look at what you get. Let us know in the comments section below, would you go with a Super O board or would you stick with the mainstream brands like Asus and Gigabyte? It'd be really interesting to find out how well Super O are doing in the market because yes, they're not really prevalent in many retailers, but I think that they've got a really good product and I wanna see more from them see what they're able to do maybe in the future. And I think the next launch for them is going to be a very, very big one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you all in the next video. See you later, bye-bye.